In conversation with people who believe Jesus was created, they'll probably have mentioned Revelation 3.14. Here, the focus is the beginning of God's creation. They say this is proof that Jesus was not only created, but the first of God's creations, coinciding with their interpretation of Colossians 1.15. Does it really mean that? Let's look using the KJV. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The focus is obviously the beginning. Now, translations of this verse are all over the place. Beginning, beginner, ruler, origin of creation. Which explains Christ? If it's ruler, well, that takes no explanation. If it's beginner, that just means Jesus made everything. We know this already. If it's beginning, well, you could take that to mean he's the origin of creation. However, the issue comes as some take this to mean he's the first creation. That's a wide range of different meanings from just one word. So which is it? Now, we understand all this, but let's start with the Amen. This is about Christ as truth, which Paul gives in more detail in 2 Corinthians 1.20. Hard to disagree with this. Next is the faithful and true witness, meaning Christ communicates the truth perfectly. Still unwise to object. Okay, now the word, beginning. This is where the controversy begins. First, let's see what the Greek says. It uses the word RK. RK can mean beginning or beginner. We see that all over the New Testament. However, it can also mean ruler. Just look at Luke 20.20, Romans 8.38, Ephesians 6.12, Titus 3.1, and many more. This is why there are so many different translations, as the word has so many meanings. Which to choose, as one could seriously alter the nature of Christ. Let's start with the beginning. Now, there's nothing in the context nor in the parsing of the Greek to indicate this absolutely has to mean beginning. Consider, though, John is writing this under inspiration, and he does open his gospel with the word RK, John 1.1. In the beginning was the word, N, RK, N, Halogos. Now, when arcane is used, it's used with N, which is in the imperfect tense, meaning from eternity and back, as far as you can go, the word already was. And if you continue reading, the word was in a face-to-face relationship with God in this eternity past. If you keep reading further, Jesus is making all things that are made. Without Jesus, nothing that has been made was made. Jesus logically can't be in the made category. Therefore, it's very possible John is re-examining what's already been said. At the beginning of time, Christ was there, and all creation came from that point. Okay, what about the others? Beginner, origin, or ruler? Let's take into account who this is written to. Right here, the church in Laodicea. That's the same city Colossians is addressed to. See for yourself in Colossians chapter 4, verse 16. Same people, same church. This section of Revelation is a follow-up directly from Christ, giving his, we'll call it, summary of feelings. So do we find the word RK used in Colossians? Well, yes. Colossians 1.16, 1.18, 2.10, 2.15. In these areas, it's talking about how he's creator of all things, how he's reconciling the world to himself, the origin and ruler. The whole area is about how Christ is the truth, how life is found in him, since all things are from him and for him. Every nation, every particle, every atom. All things have their origin in Christ, and he upholds them by his power. So if the Laodiceans are at all familiar with this letter, they easily understand what R.K. means, and possibly a summary of who Christ is, the truth, the ruler, the origin of all creation. So, R.K., which is it? Beginning? Beginner? Begin est? Hell if I know. Seriously. And that's okay, because this is one verse. You aren't supposed to read a dozen words and have the entire complex nature of Christ explained to you, especially in a text that isn't trying to teach us that. If this verse can teach us anything, it's don't use this as a proof text. This is why the Bible should be read in its entirety, not taking a concept here and there, but the totality of Scripture. Correct exegesis on this word is near impossible, because there isn't much context in the following. Jesus doesn't follow up with his preeminence, a beginning, or his role in creation. Look, the Bible is pretty big, and there are other places to learn about the nature of Christ. This isn't one of them. If we're to grab anything from this verse, it's that Christ is the truth, he's explained that perfectly, and he's kind of a big deal. People know him. One more point on Revelation 3.14. If you read verse 19, we see Jesus is the one who disciplines those he loves. That's what Paul says in Hebrews 12, 6, and 7. Except it's God who disciplines. He's quoting Deuteronomy 8, 5, Psalm 94, 12, Proverbs 3, 11 through 12, and more, which again is all about God. So Jesus is quoting scripture about what God does, but says he's the one doing it. Neat. That's why you keep reading the text, all of it. 
Jesus is the one knocking. He's the one giving eternal life to all those who overcome. How does one overcome? 1 John 5, by our faith. It's by the testimony, the gospel, that we are sealed and overcome the world because of our trust in the person and work of Christ. If you find someone saying, Jesus was created, proof in Revelation 3.14, just move down a few verses and ask how we overcome the world. I bet you it's not by faith, but by extra rules created by their leaders. Those who preach a false Christ almost always preach a false gospel. 